so this is Tara, uh, knock on heaven's door, Tara, um, Tara Talks World News on location, and I'm going to talk about the Kylie Rodney, R-O-D-N-I in California, who went missing after a campground um, party, a senior party. And then, uh, I guess three days later, it was in the, within the same weekend, a couple, um, a couple from, let's see, where's the couple from? Yuba, Yuba, Y-U-B-A, uh, I'm not sure what state that was, what, what also went missing. Um, and I just saw a news clip and it came up on my news clip and I haven't done any Terror Talks World News or Missing Persons, but this one came up and um, caught my eye. So my intuitive hit initially was, because they were saying, well, they didn't think the crimes, or if there is a crime, um, were connected. However, um my intuitive hit was that they were connected and I watched a video of her friends talking and there was one friend and I'm not throwing shade to the friend at all um, so don't misinterpret it but the one girl I don't know what her name was but she was saying like oh you know I, I had to get another ride home because Kay Kylie was um, too drunk to drive me home and I, I thought I felt a little anger resentment about that it was a little cold but then again I thought about it you know back when I was 21 22 whatever um, we'd always go to the city you know to go to the cool bars in the city of Chicago we lived out in the suburbs and we'd always have a designated driver and whenever my best friend was the designated driver, when I thought like, oh, okay, you know, I could have a few beers or whatever, she always got drunk. So it was like, yeah, it was a little irritating, you know, because she, she was supposed to be the designated driver and get us all home alive. And she got drunk. So it was irritating. But on my part, I was like, oh, give me the keys. Okay. I can't. You know, now I can't drink. So, um, yeah, it was irritating, but I always, always, not just with her, but I always end up being the designated driver. So I never got to let, like, my hair down and, and just have a night of, you know, because, you know, I wanted my life at the end of the day. So what I did was take the keys and became the designated driver. So, and I, I'm not trying to, I mean, I guess this is going to sound judgmental, but if it was her best friend, I, you know, she said that she was like, oh, have fun. I love you. You know, maybe, maybe she did say, get someone else to drive you home. I don't think you should drive. Maybe she did say all those things. But if it were my best friend, I would have either, if I was capable of driving, I would have taken her keys and drove us both home. Or... I would have um, found someone that I would make sure would have taken her home, um, you know, versus just like, I'm going to look out for myself. Um, okay. Yeah. You don't want to get in a car with a drunk driver. Okay. That is true. And, and I got the intuition that maybe this has happened before. So maybe this girl was just like fed up and maybe this girl can't drive, you know, doesn't have a ride, you know who knows doesn't have a car doesn't have a license who knows and was just like I got to get myself home and I'm not going in a car with a drunk driver which is totally correct but if it was her best friend you know and maybe she did maybe she did find someone to say you know make sure she gets home safe who knows she didn't say that I just felt a little resentment from that girl a little coldness a little resentment that's just me but you know um she might not have thought anything was going to go down or, or happened to her friend. This must be Poodle Day. There's two more uh, standard poodles here. Uh, different um, different colors. But, um, so that, that was a little off-putting. 
but um, I, someone else at the party said that a lot of older people showed up and the party was way bigger than I guess this group of seniors or whatever graduation party and there were some drugs going around and that's how I intuitively connected the couple now if it's not the couple that went missing shortly thereafter then my you know I am on lack of sleep I am homeless in my car right now so take it for what it's worth if it's not these people that got um, were missing they did find them but we're missing if it would is if it isn't those people because my first intuitive hit was those people were at the party because they were at the same campground and they were doing drugs too and whatever you know sexual fantasies or things that couples have sometimes bringing in a third person you know maybe they were high or as SD or I don't know, heroin or whatever they do these days. Um, maybe they had a discussion and were like, let's like play out our fantasies and let's, you know, get this girl that obviously is drunk to pieces and um, do this thing, sexual thing with her. So I felt that. I felt that she was abduct, abducted. Now, maybe it wasn't that couple, but I felt initially that it was that couple that took the opportunity, okay? Spice up their sex life, whatever. I'm not going to get as graphic as I saw it, but they initially said, hey, honey, you know, you're too drunk. Um, my girlfriend, my boyfriend will drive your car you come with me, honey, um, give us your license so we know where your address is, so we know how to get you home, and we'll get you home. They took both cars away from the campground. Um, they possibly ditched her car into the lake, the boyfriend. Um, somehow got it to go itself into that lake, so... You know, it might be in that lake, the car. And then um, they got her into their car. They might have, no, I guess they didn't because they found the car. I was going to say they switched the license plates, but, but they didn't. Maybe they took the license plates off the car before they just it in that water. Um, so they got her in their car. My, my, mind you, she's still drunk. She thinks these are nice people. She thinks they're going to take her home. But quickly, she sobers up because she realizes what their true intentions are. And, you know, with a night full of partying and, you know, laughter and drugs going around. And, you know, they convince her that, you know, like what, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens at this campground stays in this campground. And, and they kind of you know, coerce her to do certain acts and, you know, act like heart hearted about it. Like no one's ever going to know. And come on, let, let's be free. Just, you know, and she's crying, but, um, quickly she realizes the situation. And although they kind of knew that this wasn't going to be a one-time thing. But they made her seem like it. They it made her believe it was going to be a one-time thing. And it got a little more violent. And it got a little more like, if you don't do this, these certain things, then we're not going to let you go. So you need to do these certain things. Like right now, right here, you know, let's get this over with. Let's just have this fun. And then, sweetie, we will let you go. But that wasn't their plan. They were going to keep her as a sex slave. And now, mind you, I'm thinking it's that couple that was went missing. And then they said um, they weren't connected because the 
the boyfriend's um, ping of his phone was like 100 miles away. So, you know, they took her, you know, the 100 miles away. Now, I just saw, I looked at my phone because I wanted to see if there was any updates. Well, they did find the couple um, had crashed the car and um, they were dead in the car, but they're still investigating the accident. So, I was thinking possibly that they were either doing drugs again and just naturally crashed the car or... Kaylee, um, you know, they probably were making her do drugs, but came sober and made the car crash and escaped, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to die with this, these people. This is awful abuse. I'd rather just die. So I'm going to make the car crash. So she caused the crash and then escaped from the vehicle. Um, if they were the people, that would be the best scenario for her to have, uh, have escaped. Um, now, maybe it's not those people. Maybe those people really did just crash their car and they're innocent. But this is just my intuitive hit, hit, hit that I got. Now, with those people being dead and in a car accident, um, we'll never know if those were the real people unless she did survive and can come forward. But if those were not the people, I do feel that she was abduct abducted. Um, and it may not even have been a couple, but that was my first intuitive hit. But it could have been someone, some adult at that party that was doing drugs that took her as a... Um, as a captive, as a sex slave, basically. So, you know, I don't feel that she's deceased. And, you know, um, my wires could be crossed because I am on lack of sleep and stuff like that. But that was the intuitive hit that I had for her. So, um, not that I want those other people to be killed in a car crash, especially if they're very innocent, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm very sorry if they are very innocent, you know, I'm very sorry for the, the family's loss. I am very sorry. And I'm not, um, I'm just saying what I'm intuitively thinking. And like I said, maybe it's not that couple, maybe it's a different couple, but it just seems very coincidental. Um, but that's my take on it. So we'll have to see how this all plays out. And, you know, I might be wrong. I might be totally wrong. So we'll see. But that was my intuitive hit. And I was called to do a video on it. So I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everybody.